Welcome to another edition of Green is Good. Today, we're so honored to have with us Keith Anderson. He's the director of the District Department of Environment, and this is in Washington, D.C. Welcome to Green is Good, Keith. John, thank you for having me. Hey, Keith, before we get talking about all the great stuff you're doing in Washington, D.C., with regards to the environment and sustainability, can you please share with our listeners your story, your journey leading up to this great position? How did you even get here, and what were some of your inspirations and epiphanies along the way? Great question, John. Great question. Um, I'm a native Washingtonian and a product of D.C. public schools. Um, And, you know, my love for the environment must have started uh, with my mother, who was actually a biology teacher uh, in D.C. public schools for over 25 years. Uh, And so that's where I first, you know, uh, came in touch with uh, the environment around me and how our behavior affects um, our, our environment. So that's where my that's where my love for the environment came from. And so when I graduated from Hampton University, uh, 1999, um, I, I, I took a job uh, a year after I graduated uh, with uh, the, the, the energy office here in, in, in D.C. government. Um, and a few years later, the energy office uh, merged with a few other administrations within D.C. government, and they created the Department of the Environment. Um, wow. And I essentially just rose through the ranks, John, and um, <laughs> now I'm the director. That is so great, and it's so, such a great tribute to your mom that she was uh, one of your main inspirations to be doing the great and important work that you're doing right now, Keith. And just for our listeners out there, uh, to, if you want to follow along on your iPad or your other tablets or your uh, laptop or desktop while um, we get to enjoy some time with Keith today uh, and want to check out all the great work he's doing in Washington, D.C., you could go to www.ddoe.dc.gov. Keith, um, you know, this is one of the most important cities in the world. It's where our White House is. It's where our government leaders are. Um, and right. this is a very important role that you have. Um, uh, when, when was the tipping point? in D.C. for you and your colleagues to decide it's, uh, we got to make D.C. green and a sustainable city because we are, what you know, the shining light that m- the world is watching. When that, was that That's absolutely point? correct. That yeah. is absolutely correct. That point was a few years ago okay. uh, when, when D.C. was, and it still is, experiencing a tremendous economic boom. Um, I don't know how many of your listeners have been to D.C. or haven't been here in a while, but if you haven't been here in a while and you come back today, you will not recognize this city. Um, Mm. There there are neighborhoods where there were once parking lots. There are office buildings where there were once uh, bad neighborhoods, so to speak. This 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 neighborhood this city has experienced a a tremendous turnaround in the last five or so years, and Mm. we noticed that with this economic development, we have to balance the needs of environmental protection and community equity. And so that's when we realize that we have to make sure this city, as we experience this economic development here, this boom in economic yeah. development, is a sustainable city, that we do not further cause harm to our environment, and that we make sure that the long-term residents who have been here for 20-plus years experience or in or are able to enjoy the new city that we that we have here today Uh, and so that was the tipping point when we said you know what we have to put something together to ensure that this is the greenest healthiest most livable city from everyone for everyone uh here in washington dc and that's so important, you know, Keith, that's a great point. It's not just about growth, it's about sustainable growth. So if, if, that's what, if that's what you've done there in terms of your leadership, and that's what you and your colleagues are trying to accomplish, how do you then define sustainability in Washington, D.C.? Oh, we, we define it as, uh, as balancing the needs of environmental yep. protection, okay. eco- economic development, and, and community equity. That's oh, what... That's what that's what, how we define sustainability here in D.C. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's just absolutely important that, you know, folks re- reap the benefits of our, 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 uh, our tremendous city here in Washington, D.C. So, okay, you and, made not this only, dis- and not only those yeah. who live here, those who come yeah. visit and work here as well. Yeah. Um, and it truly takes not only the residents, but the businesses, the, vis- the, the visitors to make smart decisions 
you know, we want we want people to take recycling, for instance, not mm-hmm. as just the right thing to do, but a smart business practice. So, like um, you, you know, when, when the city is growing at the rate of, at Washington D.C. is, we, we, John, we have 1,100 people moving here every month, um, wow. and I think when you look around the country, that's just unheard of. Right. So we have to ensure <laughs> that the new residents coming in and the old residents that are have been here for a while. We have to ensure that our city, you know, is is sustainable and can and, and can sustain that growth. So you made that decision a couple of years back. What were some of the goals you put in place, and what's the progress been to date, Keith? Um, well, we we've have actually. So we put together the sustainable DC plan for your for your listeners out there. Yeah, they can they can view the plan in its entirety at sustainabledc.org. Uh, again, that's the sustainabledc.org. Um, and in our plan, we have um, 143 actions that we believe will have will make DC the most sustainable D- uh, city uh, in the in the country, if not the world, by 2032. And what we did, John, is we 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 recognized that we're, there was there were some inherent challenges in our city that we had to deal with, and those challenges consisted of jobs and the economy. We want people to be healthy. We need equity and diversity, and we have to address climate change and environmental factors. Um, and so, those were the, some of the challenges that our city faced um, when when we looked at this uh, sustainable DC plan. And some the solutions that we came up with, uh, John, um, yeah. are in seven areas, um, and that consists of the built environment, energy efficiency, mm. food. You'd be surprised that in a city like this that you have neighborhoods where our children or some residents do not have access to healthy food. Uh, We call those food deserts. Um, And those are some serious issues that probably not only Washington, D.C., but every major city in the country faces. Um, we, we, We found that nature was one of our solutions. Transportation, a very big issue here in the Washington right. area. Um, sure. How we deal with our waste and how we deal with our water, especially the storm water runoff here in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's a major it. contributing factor uh, to our rivers and streams that are quite frankly polluted. Um, currently, uh, for, for those out there who are familiar with uh, Washington, D.C., it's no secret that the Anacostia is probably one of the most polluted rivers in the country. Unfortunately, mm. over 3 billion gallons of untreated stormwater flows oh. into the Anacostia every year. And so these are things that we have to address to ensure that our city is sustainable in the future and for future, for future generations to come. For our listeners who just joined us, we're so honored to have with us today Keith Anderson. He's the director of the District Department of Environment. This is in Washington, D.C., one of the most important cities in the entire world. And for listeners that want to learn more about all the great work that Keith and his colleagues are doing, you can go to sustainabledc.org or to www.ddoe.dc.gov. Keith, Talk about now, you laid out, and I'm on your site, sustainabledc.org now. This is a beautiful site, very simple to understand, very colorful, and it's very clear. But, you know, you've laid out these seven major initiatives, and they're wonderful, and they're important. Now, what's the reverse side of this, Keith? How do you then champion and get public participation in your great sustainability goals? Well, you know what, John? That that is an excellent question. Um, when we first started this this movement with Sustainable DC, we reached out to every community group that we could think of because, uh, quite frankly, we we've, we've talked to over six thousand residents here in in the city over the last two years when it comes to Sustainable DC, right. and we planned a meeting one day at the convention center um, right. where we wanted a lot of the a lot of the goals. If you're on our line, a lot of the goals, the solutions, the challenges. Those actually came from our residents. Wow. We, we, we received, uh, I can't even remember, John, over 2,000 uh, suggestions from our residents of the things that they thought would make, well, first of all, some of the challenges in the city and things that they thought would turn the city around and make it a sustainable city as, mm. we, can, as we grow. And that night, we, we thought we would be lucky if we had 50 people to show up at that community mm. meeting. John, we had over 400 people that one night, that first night, 
um, wow. that we wanted to talk about how to make uh, D.C. a sustainable city. So from that night, we've uh, we've we've had over 125 uh, community meetings. We mm. actually have what we call um, sustainable D.C. ambassadors. These are people uh, from the community who may be able to reach folks at a deeper level than perhaps, you know, someone with a government ID can walk into a community meeting and do and explain to them exactly what sustainability means, how Mm. it affects them, and how they can help. Um, And that's just for the residents. Now, it's going to also take our businesses, John. And Mm. we've, um, we've experienced a tremendous amount of help from our businesses because they recognize the importance of sustainability, too. Uh, here in the District of Columbia, we have several business improvement districts, and they have been tremendously helpful in ma- ensuring that the neighborhoods that they are responsible for uh, put in certain measures to c- make sure that that neighborhood is, uh, is sustainable, whether it be recycling programs, whether yeah. it be ways to control our stormwater runoff, or just quite yeah. frankly, educating the residents. So it, it takes much more than uh, government. Yeah. It takes, you know, public-private partnerships. It takes educating the residents. And it also it, it takes educating those who visit this city. I think uh, in this city, the last I heard, we have over 20 million people who come here every year uh, to mm. visit the nation's capital and to see huh. uh, the, the marvelous you know, museums and, and things that we have here in the National Mall and uh, about the city. So it really takes, uh, it really takes a, vid- a village, uh, so to speak, John, <laughs> well, uh, to, to make sure you- that we, we reach our goal of, uh, of making D.C. a sustainable city. Well, but you make some great points, Keith. It can't just be pedantically the government saying this is how it's going to be. You're getting the whole movement and the you know the evolution and the revolution going from the ground up, like you said, from the people's participation to the business participation. And what a great point! You have that many million visitors from around the world every year. Your leadership is so critical on green and sustainability because everybody's watching. The world is watching. That's right. That's right, John. And if, and if we don't get that level of participation, John, quite frankly, we will fail right. at this. And well, we recognize that early on. And so it's just it's been a pleasure to see, though, how folks want to be involved. Right. Um, right. Folks from folks from who just moved here three weeks ago who, to folks who have lived here thir- for 30 years. Uh, folks recognize the importance of uh, environmental protection. They recognize that, you know, climate change is here. Right. Um, you know, it's right. not it's not a hoax. It's not a joke. <laughs> it, 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 now we're at the point now where we have to build our c- cities to be resilient to cr- climate change. That's um, so interesting. Our, our, here in Washington, D.C., our summers are harder, are hotter. Our yep. storms are stronger. I never heard of a polar vo- vortex until last winter. Uh, <laughs> it's something that we experienced. We had one of the one of yep. the toughest winters that I can remember. And I'm a native Washingtonian, John. Right. I've been here 38 years. Right. Um, and so now we have to ensure that not only Washington, D.C., but our cities across the country are resilient to climate change. So and folks are understanding that. Folks are seeing that. Folks are, are waking up and, and understand, whoa, wait a minute. I have to make a difference. My family has to make a difference. My block has to make a difference. My neighborhood has to make a difference. This city has to make a difference. And it's just been delightful to see the level of participation from our residents and our businesses here in the city uh, as we move forward with Sustainable D.C. It's just been a wonderful thing to recognize. So, Keith, you know, what we say in the, in the in business is what's measurable is manageable. So we'll talk a little bit about where does D.C. rate in terms of other cities right now, in terms of your progress in terms of green and sustainability initiatives, and how competitive is it among other city leaders and other department heads that you get to uh, interrelate with nationally and internationally for, you know, the biggest green halo and the biggest green kudos for all the great wins that you're getting every day. Right, right. Excellent question. And, and in John, in many ways, D.C., the, the District of Columbia, yeah. is leading the pack. Wow. Uh, we, have the, we have the highest amount of square footage when it comes to green roofs in the country. Um, wow. Keep in mind, D.C. is only 69 square miles. Wow. We're, we're not that big of a city. Uh, we have yeah. 69 square miles. We have 642,000 residents and counting. 
but oh. we have the highest amount of green roofs uh, nationwide. Oh. And when wow. it comes to square footage, we have the, high, uh, the, the, the highest amount of LEED certified buildings per capita in the country. Um, and so in many ways, John, uh, when it comes to green initiatives, we're yeah. leading the pack. Um, and another thing that I'm um, very um, uh, pleased with is right. the way we deal with our stormwater, uh, oh. John. Um, okay. Like I like I mentioned, stormwater is a major uh, is a contrib- major contributing factor to the pollution of our Anacostia River, um, a river right. that connects two sides of our city, our great city. Um, and you know, pursuant to our new stormwater regulations in our, our municipal separate storm sewer uh, permit, um, we have developed a stormwater credit trading system. John, mm-hmm. this is the first in the country, if not the world. Uh, okay. where here in the District of Columbia, for new developments that um, disturb more than 5,000 square feet of land, um, developers have to adhere to certain stormwater regulations. Hmm. Uh, and part of that means they have to retain up to a 1.2-inch storm on the property. Um, so that's normally water that would, you know, just go down the drain and 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 certain and, and and go down the drain and go to our wastewater treatment facility, and in many cases during certain storms, those 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 sewer uh, com- those sewer lines are they overflow, and this is when you uh-huh. get the combined sewer overflows into our rivers and tributaries, gotcha. um, and so because so with the stormwater regulations in place, um, right. d- developers have to at least meet up to half of the 1.2 inch requirement and then if they if they can buy they can purchase credits for the other half ah, um, gotcha. or if a developer creates they're, they're, they have to create 1.2 well right. they have to do 0. 0.6 rather um, but there's some developers who go above and beyond the call of duty and they may create 1.7 inches of retention on site um, and they can sell that 0. 0.5 on the open market, um, and so it's it's a wonderful system. It's just got off the ground. It's moving, and you know I'm very proud of the team here at DDOE for ensuring for creating this stormwater credit trading system. Um, I love John, it. The world the world is looking at it. The I world love is it. looking at it. And others are so. going to follow it. We're, we're, you know, Keith, we're down to three minutes or so, unfortunately. Talk to me, talk to me about it. How, you know, you're the head of this very important uh, department of the environment in D.C. Um, are, you know, how does it interrelate with the mayor's office and with the other government agencies? And how much latitude are you given to continue to lead in this very important city uh, where all eyes are on uh, around the world? Well, the good news here, John, is that the Sustainable D.C. plan is an umbrella, and it, it, it actually touches almost every agency in the gov- in D.C. government, wow. um, from the Department of Parks and Recs to Recs, um, to our Department of Public Works, to our Department of Transportation. Everybody, every director, every agency has a role to play in making our city sustainable. And if your if your if your listeners would look at uh, go to our website sustainabledc.org, you yep. will see um, the 143 actions, and then you will also see what agencies are responsible for certain actions in that plan. Wow. Um, and you will notice that it all, it affects almost every agency in the uh, in DC government. Uh, so wow. we all have a role to play. As a matter of fact, uh, the mayor has commissioned a green cabinet. Um, that is made up of 27 other directors, my my colleagues, um, to keep us accountable to ensure to make sure that you know that we're moving forward uh, with accomplishing these actions in the plan. So it's become really part of the culture and the DNA DNA of Washington D.C. to make it a more green and sustainability uh, you know driven city across all all your agencies. Absolutely. It has. Awesome. It has. That's awesome. Well, that's great. And, and Keith, we, I just want to say thank you again for coming on. Green is good today. I want to share with our listeners two ways to find out more of the important work Keith Anderson and his team is doing in D.C. Go to www.ddoe.dc.gov or sustainabledc.org. They're beautiful websites. You'll learn more. You'll get inspired. And we can do more to save the planet. Thank you, Keith, for being an inspiring sustainability leader. You are truly living proof 
that green is good. Every day. Thank you.